Good afternoon, everyone. Or maybe it's still morning. I'm not sure here. Yeah, it's still morning. It's not even 11 yet. I'm trying to uh, scramble somewhat to get some things ready for Christmas, and uh, I'm really not too good about that. I, I've seen my own incompetence in holidays. I've always kind of uh, slacked on things and put things off to the last minute. And uh, speaking of incompetence, uh, this is, I guess, what I'm, what I wanted to make a video about. I wanted to talk about the Dunning-Kruger effect, which is otherwise known as Mount Stupid, and it's difficult to uh, to explain in my own terms. So I'm just going to go ahead and read basically what it is. But it's it's a well-known, um, let's just say it's well-known through history that those who appear to uh, show the most confidence in their truths and uh, about their own abilities, people tend to underestimate their own abilities if they are intelligent, uh, but when they are incompetent, they tend to overestimate their abilities. So. Uh, let's just read it like this. The Dunning-Kruger effect is a slightly more specific case of the bias known as illusory superiority, where people tend to overestimate their good points in comparison to others around them, while concurrently underestimating their negative points. The effect has been shown by experiment in several ways, but in this case, Dunning and Kruger tested students on a series of criteria such as humor, grammar, and logic, and compared the actual test results with each student's own estimation of their performance. Those who scored well on these tests were shown, consistently, to underestimate their performance. This is not terribly surprising, and can be explained as a form of psychological projection. Those who found the tasks easy, and thus scored highly, mistakenly thought that they would also be easy for others. This is similar to the aforementioned imposter syndrome, found notably in graduate students and high-achieving women, whereby high achievers fail to recognize their talents as they think that others must be equally good. Those who scored lowest on the test were found to have grossly overestimated their scores, thus displaying what became known as the Dunning-Kruger effect. And so, there's a pretty, uh, there, there was a graph, I don't know if I actually, uh, if there's a graph on this page, but I'm going to go to the next page here because it might have some more, uh, there's another, another page I wanted to read because these quotes go back. Um, go back in time, you know, thousands of years. These are things that have been reflected through history. So here's a quote, some different quotes by uh, a variety of people through history uh, relating to this same idea. And this is the, the one you may have heard the most is Socrates saying, uh, the greatest wisdom lies in knowing you know nothing. And for a lot of people, uh, it's of course not the way he not, uh, put it actually, but according to this, uh, he interpreted, Socrates interpreted a prophecy from the, the Oracle of Delphi that he was wise despite feeling that he did not fully understand anything, as the wisdom of being aware that he knew nothing. It says, Confucius said, real knowledge is to know the extent of one's ignorance. Shakespeare said, the fool doth think he is wise, but the wise man knows himself to be a fool. Alexander Pope says, a little learning is a dangerous thing. <laughs> Henry Fielding, who was a novelist, he said, For men of true learning and almost universal knowledge, always compassionate, pity the ignorance of others. But fellows who excel in some little, low, contemptible art are always certain to despise those who are unacquainted with that art. Now that's one I can understand. I've heard that from a lot of people. A person who has a lot of expertise in one field that uh, may not even be relevant, but all of a sudden they're an expert on everything. Um, Charles Darwin said, Ignorance more frequently begets confidence than does knowledge. And Friedrich Nietzsche says, The enemies of truth. Convictions are far more dangerous enemies of truth than lies. And uh, a philosopher Bertrand Russell says, one of, the mo one of the painful things about our time is that those who feel certainty are stupid and those with any imagination and understanding are filled with doubt and indecision. So it even comes across as arrogant to even talk about that, because, uh, you know, by that token, it's kind of a, uh, it's a trap, in other words. Uh, you can't determine whether you are ignorant or 
intelligent, or rather aware, if you will. I guess the example I could give is so many of these people who claim to be awake. You know, like that's why I made a video recently about people who claim to be woke. Um, I've had various comments left on video, random, some of my old videos, things like uh, one the other day was uh, something like, dude thinks he's woke or something like that. And then usually I will, you know, implore further, ask, well, hey, well, what is specifically do you mean by woke? And, and, and what is it that you're trying to convey here? Um, and you find that these people are all still wrapped up in some... Uh, fear about chemtrails or uh, fluoride poisoning, uh, and meanwhile that's like the, the utmost focus for them, but everyone else is the ignorant one. Everyone else is the sheeple, the stupid people. And I've, this isn't a new thing as far as the internet, I've been watching this unfold for, you know, uh, well, <clears throat> since I read Behold a Pale Horse uh, back in, I think, 96, and kind of gave me this uh, kind of a yearning to understand this alternative side of things, alternative history, knowing where we came from, how we'd been lied to. And at that point, I thought I had it all figured out, because I knew things that other people didn't, or so I thought. And then I started to go through these things and say, okay, well, this is true, well, this isn't true, this might be true, this might not be true. But the hardest part is to let go of knowing for a fact that you know what the hell you're talking about. On so many subjects. In fact, there are very few things we can know for sure, and those are tight in our hearts. Those are strong things, like if you know how to paint a picture, if you know how to ride a bike, if you know how to uh, you know, do math equations, these are things that, that you cannot, cannot be taken from you, actual truths. These are the truths that we need, the ones that we can continue to repeat. In a way, it's our own scientific, uh, our own scientific method, the idea that uh, you know, if we have ideas that we can repeat, then we can use them in our lives. But if we're just hearing things from other people and saying, oh, did you know, did you know, did you know, um, we get wrapped up in thinking we know more than we know. And so I think there's a vast amount of ignorance out there on people who claim to be experts on things, but you find out that they're not even an expert on the one thing that they think they're an expert on. And that's hard, because as a carpenter for years, I saw this in uh, a lot of you know the younger guys who, oh, I could do this quicker, I could figure this out. These are usually the ones that come on a job site and think, oh God, why is this going so slow, or, or why are you doing things this way when it should be done this way? And sometimes the person's right, but more often they're proven to just be unaware of the complicated nature of things. Another example would be people who just say, well, we need to just get rid of government, that kind of attitude. The idea that you're oversimplifying how a society works and operates. Or, you know, why can't we just feed the world? That kind of thing. It's like noble thinking, but, uh, well, because there's war zones that are blocking and there's embargoes and, uh, and because life is complicated. And the more you learn about the world, the more complicated it becomes and the harder it is to step back and go, wow, you know, do I want to continue going down this path of learning all these things because I'm not sure anymore. And that's a key point that I've found, is that a lot of people don't want to educate themselves further on certain subjects because they're afraid of hearing something that might conflict with what they want to believe. And that is ignorance. That's ignoring the facts because it makes you more comfortable. So I know that I've fallen victim to that in the past at times. Um, I think we all do. Uh, but I've learned from my, my mistakes, and I've learned to not get trapped into a certain way of thinking. But there are certain truths, like I said, that we know, but those are internal. And uh, so, yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult to discuss things with completely ignorant people because they really don't have any a basic foundation to build their thoughts on. So hopefully in the future, people will, uh, you know, there's always going to be some who choose to not educate. I guess it's a point to not be aware of the fact that they don't know shit. So. Those are my thoughts on it. I certainly don't know half of what I thought I knew when I was younger, but that's growth in my opinion, and I'm the only one that has to live my life, and I'm the only one who has to deal with my inner thoughts, my inner emotions, my inner turmoil, my voices, my, my background chatter, which I'm learning to harness and rope in and use to my advantage. In fact, when you look back on life, you start to say, wow, I didn't even realize this was happening to me. Or, wow, I was kind of stupid for doing this. Or, what was I thinking? That's okay. You know, everyone's going to have that. That's the hope, anyway. 
But if you're, say, 40, 50, 60, and you're looking back on your childhood as saying, wow, I've always had it figured out, I've always been smart, you're probably one of the dumbasses. No offense, but I think all of us made mistakes, and all of us did stupid things. And it uh, doesn't mean they had to hurt anyone or even ourselves, but just things we could have done better or things that we thought we knew that we didn't. And uh, so it's important to me because growth, in my opinion, means that all of us are able to discuss, you know, subjects rationally without getting attached to the subject because this is where extreme ignorance breeds is when you're having an argument or a debate with someone and they're so attached to what they believe and think is true that they think you're personally offending them when you're not. So. I guess it's all about civil discourse and doing the best we can. <laughs> but uh, definitely calling out bullshit when we see it. And that's one of the hard things, too. So, because that, that's up to the individual. And uh, anyhow, hope you all have a happy holiday. I may or may not make another video before or after Christmas here. Got, you know, life calls. But good to make a video and talk to you all. Peace out.